it's time for a brand new character we're going to keep on dishing out different characters and a different request and trying to switch up different shows so it's not the same show popping up constantly for the request so everybody else gets a chance to get the characters that they want to see some of y'all that y'all want to see some of these characters get into the game but the big question at stake is we don't know if any of these characters or just any character new characters in general are going to get into this game and what we have left what's left of this game is there going to be more outside of the patches the patches do not mean anything patches do not create characters patches do not contain characters they're unlikely to contain characters at least at where just where we're at right now because the patches are going to contain bug fixes and quality of life the other the term is quality of life fixes which allows the game to run better and it updates the game's performance it'll perform better and characters will get changed characters will get buffed which will mean that they get stronger their attacks do more dam damage and more and then the nurse they'll get a little bit weaker they'll deal less damage and some changes to certain moves that might be a little too strong so those things might get nerfed and then the mix of online changes and just stability making sure everything is running well but I think that's what the game is going to be. I think that's what it's going to be. But I don't want it that way. And that's why we're keeping this series going. At least I am. I'm keeping my own series going for these character requests. Because I don't want to just, well, the game's over. Forget about everybody's requests. I'm not going to do them anymore. Even, I'm just going to say this right now. And quote me if you want. I did it to the first game. When it was over with, I was still doing the moveset all the different possibilities of what they could do for the next game we got another game and now we're back at square one in the Rocco situation just like I have mentioned before here we don't know what's going to happen we don't know what we're going to get if there's going to be more and characters like Maddie Fenton with her strong high fire fighter potential she'll be awesome to see added into this game what do you how do you guys feel about a new Danny Phantom character or another Danny Phantom rep getting into this game that's probably not going to be Black Plasmus unfortunately but it's different characters this just goes to show you just a wide variety of options that they can bring out to beef up this roster so the first thing we're going to do before we start doing this we're going to make sure everything's set I think I did this before I just wanted to double check and make sure the announcer is all the music's up a little bit so you guys can hang out for as long as you want to for this live premiere I'm not sure how long this is going to be. I might end up talking about some other things that I want to mention, maybe going towards the end, because we're getting ready to answer the final week of or the final days that's left. It's going to be four days left because Halloween hits this Thursday for the spooky, the spookiest holiday, <laughs> the, the scariest day of them all. It hits this Thursday and then this upcoming Friday, we're going to be in November and then we got one more month after this then the year is over so it just makes me wonder what do they have next is it going to be any more that's going to be on what's going to be the news is it going to be any more content coming to this game as far as characters i don't care about the patches at this point I'm still going to cover them test out stuff but i'm thinking about new characters like everybody else is what about the characters that's coming to this game? Is there going to be any more? Will we see anybody else join this game? Even if they're a, a returning rep, a returning veteran, per se. I'll take all the veterans. If there's no more new characters, at least we'll be able to get all the other veterans getting into the game one by one by one. I'll take anything at this point that's a new character. And I'll just go ahead and say it. If they even have, if they just do what they did from this one. Before we get into it, when we have avatar reps and SpongeBob and stuff like that, at least I'll be testing the characters out and giving them a chance. But it's not exactly going to help keep the players around when there's nothing new getting represented for other shows. So they got definitely a lot of options. And characters like Maddie Fenton, for example, for a few of you guys already requested, a couple, of you, I'm sure you guys know who you are just listening in on this requested her so 
Now it's time to get into Maddie Fenton, all things Danny Phantom throughout this video premiere for today. And the moveset is going to be uh, in the description and the time stamps are going to be listed as well. So you can click on whatever you want to listen to. If you don't want your if you're not interested in this character, that's completely fine, too. And you can read on through the description for the moveset and you can post the characters that you want to see next. Don't spam the characters because it's not going to allow it's not going to make me want to pick that character next. I don't pick anyone in particular. I just like mixing it up and going with a different character. Maybe I want to try a different show, but constantly requesting a character is not going to get you the request because it's my choice of whether or not I want to create a moveset for that character or pick them next, especially when there's so many requests that it have that still exists even from the first game it's a lot of characters to get to so i want to be fair to others who've been patient and haven't had a chance to really request a character and trying to cut in front of the line is not going to work but i just wanted to throw that out there because some people didn't know but that's how i make this request and started this series for something different so since we're in this we're in times like this where nothing's going on for the game i wanted to create something and expand outside of just live streaming the game and playing the game i wanted to create some ideas of to help give them some ideal characters that people might be interested in seeing and could help boost the sales of the game to help bring the game back and I think she could be one of those characters because of her potential, because of what she's capable of. But let's get into all things Danny Phantom. We're going to go ahead and drop in to the roster so everybody can see all the characters in the game as usual. We'll get into the stages and so on and so forth. Hopefully we get more. But we're going to keep it on. We're going to be using some of these different characters. And later on, I end up coming up with an idea of how she could play with something similar to what Jimmy Neutron has. But we'll talk about that later on in the video. So we got two Danny Phantom characters that's in this game. So this sequel is a lot different because we got the introduction of several other Danny Phantom characters that appeared in this game. And there also is more that are spotted in the campaign. Clockwork, Vlad Plasmius, if you played the campaign. Clockwork and Vlad Plasmus is also in the campaign and as a new fighter we got Ember and then joining the likes of uh, Danny Phantom. So let's get into the backstory. Do you guys think we could possibly end up seeing another Danny Phantom character get into the next game or maybe some kind of different crossover that could be playable alongside of these two? So y'all can let me know some of y'all favorite Danny Phantom characters if you want to favorite episodes and maybe some villains because Danny Phantom has a lot of great villains and a lot of characters that can really stack up this roster. He can definitely catch up. His show can definitely catch up and have the likes of the four reps like we have already or five right now if you think about the DLC for Mr. Krabs. But let's get to know Madeline aka Maddie Fenton who is the mother of Danny Phantom so we're going to start talking about this and get to know the character if you don't know who this character is or if you haven't seen Danny Phantom before so Maddie Fenton is the mother of Danny Phantom and Jazz so Maddie loves hunting ghosts she's a ghost hunter just like Danny Phantom the whole entire family is basically ghost hunters and Jazz got a little bit of some ghost hunting action as well in some of the episodes as you get to as you watch this show so maddie is also uh is also a ghost hunter as i mentioned she loves hunting ghosts with jack fenton maddie is also famous for her adventures that she makes as a scientist and little do you know since vlad plasmus is in this game and he's a a villain in part of the campaign for the, the one pulling the strings things like that per se Maddie actually has a past and history with Vlad Plasmius. she was best friends she was best friends with Vlad Plasmius. 
and Vlad Plasmus is the ex-best friend of Maddie Fenton's. So the connection is no longer there. They even went to college together and they eat and there's some other things that some people probably don't even know about. Since Maddie was one of Vlad's friends in the past, she was also one of the three characters that worked on the ghost portal that backfired, causing Vlad Plasmus to get his own ghost powers. So Maddie, Maddie and Jack Fenton were friends with Vlad at the time. This was prior to Vlad Plasmus becoming evil and just pulling out schemes and trying to get after Danny Phantom and just all the kind of crazy stuff he was trying to do and he was so desperate and trying to get Danny Phantom's DNA and so it's so many different stories that come out when you start finding out in his his goals and so much more Maddie has that past with him and they're just no longer friends anymore the connection fizzled out it died out the bridge is burned so the bit the the bridge has been burnt completely so they're no longer friends with black plasma is jack and maddie are no longer with it's just as far as as far as the friends and the connection goes they're that that's all gone now so a little bit more about her she ended up later founding her own company fencing words and is now one of the co-owner owners with Jack Fenton. So Fenton Works is all is basically her company, and it's basically Maddie and Jack's company for Fenton Works. And the inventions that Danny Phantom uses in this game, like the Fenton Thermos, for example, which was also an item in the first game, all those items and those gadgets that Danny Phantom uses in the show was created and invented. By, by her. It's all fencing works. Cause these devices and these gadgets and these weapons that they use, or this this tech I'll say, that they use, to hunt these ghosts is all created by fencing works. So that this is the per, this is the character that some people probably don't know about. She's the one that's behind all of these inventions because she created them. Fence and Works is her company. That's how Danny Phantom is using the Fence and Thermos to capture these ghosts. They hunt these ghosts and she's always on the lookout just in case. And she's always prepared. So it's just going to make her even more dangerous. If she was to ever get considered in this game, she would just be that that one of those characters you just definitely don't want to underestimate because she can definitely and I'll just say this just just for the whole little silly scenario for what if if she was to try to hunt Danny Phantom down I think she can catch Danny Phantom because she can give a run I can get I think she can give Danny Phantom a run for his money I know he's part of the family and all but just imagine Danny Phantom being some kind of uh, uh, if he wasn't part of the family if there was no relationship, she would definitely be able to stop Danny Phantom because just the way she handled some of the Vlad Plasmius's creations and his inventions, she soloed all of them by herself. And it just shows her, it just shows you how powerful she is and she can definitely handle herself. So it's just proof in the pudding that it's just like, you just know that she's just so strong and if she can handle all those Vlad Plasmus's creations solo just imagine what she can do to the others she could definitely probably be able to you know take out Ember and all the others and put a stop to them with all her genius inventions and it could definitely go head to head with Jimmy Neutron just imagine that because he's also a little scientist and a genius himself just imagine the reactions. But that's the backstory basically with Matt, Maddie or Madeline Fenton and just in a nutshell. And if you watch the show, you'll definitely enjoy it and really be able to see her get involved in some of these cases and really come to the rescue and help Danny Phantom out. Danny Phantom didn't even have to get involved. He sat there and watched. He watched her deal with everything Vlad Plasmius had just thrown at her. 
Of course, he wasn't there, but her, his pets were there just from those different ghosts. She destroyed every last one of them by herself. She didn't need Danny Phantom. So you just know that she can definitely be a force to be reckoned with. So that's just a little bit of the backstory. We're going to start talking about the stages and then we're going to be getting into the costume soon. So let's start talking about the stages and almost similar if you haven't seen it. Uh, with Danny Phantom's cousin, I also had a request for I I created hers, Danny Phantom, Danny Phantom's um, moveset. I used the same stages if she was to get into the game, and also with Vlad Plasmius himself, the legend for Vlad Masters for his moveset. I went with the same two stages with Maddie Fenton with the Amity part which is where all the action takes place where some of these ghosts start getting out and escaping the ghost zone they usually start flying around and causing havoc in Amity Park which is the hometown and the city and the main setting for Danny Phantom where he's protecting the city and making sure these ghosts are stopped immediately so the next stage that I added was Vlad Masters Mansion but that'll be a stage that could come out with Vlad Plasmus if he was a playable character. But I still put it in as far as stage ideas for her DLC pack if she was to get into this game. But she definitely needs to contain the Amity part because it makes the most sense. Vlad, why would she have Vlad Masters Mansion as a stage when that can go with Vlad Plasmus as a paid DLC or an update? Because it's 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 his headquarters or his his lair so those are the two quick you know short and sweet those are the stages that i selected for her to be ideal so definitely amity park and um will definitely be a, the biggest fit or make the most sense but i still added vlad masters uh, mansion in the mix up but as you can see in this game we don't have the same stages as much anymore this is my least favorite stage i don't know how everybody else feels about this if you still play or if you remember this stage clockwork slayer is my least favorite stage in this game because of those teleporters when you play on the stage it's it looks nice and it's very well created you see clockwork in the background who's also a boss and it um, has is in, heavily involved in the story campaign it's cool to see him in the background. I, that's what I like the most about this stage. And then when you load it up with that bell, dun, dun, it's, it's just super loud. But I would say this is my least favorite stage in the game because of the teleporter and teleporters, the the portals, I'll say. The portals that teleport you all over the different place, all over the, the stage. It's hard to keep track. And the portals will even save your opponent when you're just about to knock them out they only continue to remain in the game and on the stage with that last remaining stock you're trying to knock off on them the portal keeps them alive it keeps them in, in the fight it's a cool design idea but i just didn't really like it in this game i missed the original ghost song because it's not in this danny phantom uh danny phantom stage was the original ghost song from the first game it's not in this anymore and check out the stage variations three platforms and then two single platform and then it's just a flat surface but it's i would say i would rather play and stick with you know the the flat surface for the stage variation this one i would pick the most over the original from the regular default because the portals are not there the portals are completely gone from the state when you switch to the stage variation the portals are no longer there so you just have the platforms which is good but we only got one Danny Phantom stage that's it Ember doesn't even have a stage of her own which was surprising we got two Danny Phantom characters she's the newest Danny Phantom rep but she didn't have a stage to come with her but she creates the stage with her super <laughs> she creates her own with her own ultimate but I'm surprised we didn't get anything additional for a Danny Phantom stage they can bring those stages back too for updates even if it's not a character just some more stuff to keep people try to keep people playing something but now it's time for the costumes we're back on the uh, roster 
Now, maybe some of you guys can give me some suggestions, maybe in a live premiere, and maybe in the live comments. But for me, I couldn't really come up with any costumes for her, except for a couple of, you know, I came up with some other things for some ideas that I'll get into. She wears a blue jumpsuit. So Maddie is seen wearing a blue j rubber jumpsuit, as you can see from the thumbnail as well. And even when you watch the show, she wears a blue rubber jumpsuit with long black gloves and boots. Her suit is also her suit also has a black belt with a pouch for her equipment. And then what I found out, she's sometimes seen wearing wearing the jumpsuit hood which she wears along with a pair of a black lab goggles and red lenses. So that that's just her regular outfit and then the the um the jumpsuit hood that's only one costume basically the jumpsuit hood outside of her uh, jumpsuit. So I I just went with the usual Cause I don't, I don't think that she had anything else on. I went with color variations, and she's the I ideal character that I wanted to use as an example. Not only because she's from Danny Phantom, of course. She see the color red and green. You might, they might as well do the same thing for the color variations for her jumpsuit because she didn't really have too many costumes that I seen. So some ideas instead of saying, well, only came up with one costume. Let's move on to the uh, the other the other section and ideas I don't want to stop there so the color variations as you can see that she has I like this one of course but just like with these these are just different color palette swaps she has red and she has green they might as well do the same thing for uh, Maddie's jumpsuit where you can be able to change the color of her jumpsuit it'll be different colors I'm not sure what colors they could pick I'm not sure how many colors they would go with Maybe it be two colors just like this one for Ember. But just to expand it a little bit, see the bottom bottom right uh, corner? It says L1 and R1 to change the costume. I wanted to do some, they should come out with some custom, more customization options where you can be able to change the color of the, the outfit and not only just the costume, but change the color of what they have on from their individual outfit the shoes the pants the the torso and then the hairstyle so you see what i'm saying so just separate parts of the separate clothing so you can change the color to the way you see fit and wear a different hairstyle with a mix of a different color you can even mix match the colors if you want to it'll be fun to see that as an option but they haven't done that i haven't seen them do that before I really haven't. So just some ideas that I slid in before we move on. Custom goggles. Just being able to change the color of her goggles. And you see how they're it, the red. The lenses are red. They're black goggles with red lenses. You can change the color of the goggles. And make the, the lens a little bit completely different. So you can separate the colors and mix them up. A jumpsuit color swap. And then one thing that I also spotted in one of the episodes especially when Danny Phantom revealed his secret with his true identity. She had a red winter coat on, but I don't think she will really have that as a costume because they probably wouldn't pick that as a costume for her. Because I don't really see her wearing a red winter coat with her current outfit that she has. I don't think that'll be ideal for some for a costume that the developers might end up going with. But I put it in here and just wanted to bring it up anyway because it was something different that she wore. I did see her in that undercover costume, but when she was trying to keep her identity uh, hidden. But I don't know if that would count. Maybe some, some of you guys might have some ideas for different costumes, but that's what I could come up with. But I really honestly visually see them going with these different color swaps outside of her um blue jumpsuit and then that jump the um I was trying to see what else I think I got lost in my own little notes she had the jumpsuit on but it was the um the jumpsuit hood that's all I was trying to think of that I mentioned the jumpsuit hood outside of that it's just going to be color palette swaps and then or color swaps if they change it and then maybe she could probably have her goggles off 
where you can put the goggles on and goggles off. But I wanted to utilize, and she's gonna have to keep the goggles, at least for my ideas, because the goggles I came up with um, a nice little cool ability that I saw her use in the show. So she'll probably just have these. But the mind controls, that's just that's just already a no-brainer right off the bat. Because every character has the mind control skins, even the DLC. So she'll already have these too, but it's not going to really make her costumes unique. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the taunts and animations. And that's everything I could really come up with as far as the costumes for her. Because I'm not, she hasn't really worn anything else. So taunts and animations. You guys are definitely like this one. And I got some of the episodes that I found from watching the show. So when she took on, remember I mentioned how she destroyed Vlad Plasmius's creations and his inventions with those those beasts and those different ghost pets and things. It was from the maternal maternal instinct episode definitely one of my favorite highlights and moments that i've seen where she you can really be able to see what she's capable of she'll say come on dazzle me that could be some kind of reaction and i think that'll be perfect for her taunt just like she did to try to taunt all of black plastic creatures to all rush her at once which basically what they did they all ran at her and tried to charge at her full force and she still destroyed them prior to the fight she can definitely that's definitely going to be one of her taunts and one of her reactions that i think the developers will like and it pays homage to the show and it highlights her skill and her strength because she really brought all, uh, all the stops and then some kind of funny reaction you got a problem with jumpsuits she's ha she has that kind of reaction in the uh, show so she can say that while aiming her fence informer her fence informer as a unique taunt exclusive. The fence informer I did not use in the moveset, but I use a lot of different other gadgets and inventions that she used in the show to protect herself and fight off and destroy those ghosts. And there's something funny that she could say, you despicable piece of cheese. She said that to uh, Vlad Plasmius. So I think that'll be funny. Some funny taunts and reactions that she can be able to say in the game that the developers would definitely be able to add in for some funny reactions. And I think fans out there would like to see her say, come on, dazzle me. It's one of her iconic quotes and people would like to see that because it's, it's what made her stand out. And she just soloed everybody. So it's really cool to see that on um, just watching that clip and you can even find it from that um, Eternal Instinct episode. You could be able to see her in action and really just destroy everybody. So we're going to get into the winning and losing animations real quick and then we'll follow up and uh, finish with the with the moveset. So a winning animation um, I also got from the same episode from the Maternal Instinct episode when she was getting ready to fight. I think this could be a nice little cool pose. Maddie can spin her laser bow staff or that double bladed bean sword she used against those beasts and against those ghosts. She could be able to spin her bow staff in style and strike that iconic pose when she was getting ready to fight. It'll be it'll be awesome to see that as a nice winning animation. It's perfect. So you, def you definitely got to check that out. So let's keep it on Danny Phantom. Just walk into the costumes. So a losing animation. I was trying to come up with something that could be unique, something that could also make sense. Cause she's so strong and she's brave and she can take on anybody. So I thought Maddie can cry on the ground with a broken fence in Thermos. Since she's an inventor, since she's a scientist, I thought maybe one of her something like the fence in Thermos that's in this game as an item can also be showcased in uh, as a losing animation but it's broken it's shattered it's ruined and she could be crying so I think that could be something that she could be um, she could do for a losing animation or maybe she could be frustrated with the fence and thermos being broken while she's trying to put it back together it could be a cool winning uh, uh, winning it could be a cool losing animation for her so those are the animations that I could come up with for her for now. Maybe some of you guys might have some other ideas for winning and losing animations. But I think um, 
they'll definitely go with the one for the winning animation I think but I just couldn't think I couldn't see anything that I could probably just fit her as a losing animation because she's an inventor she always invents stuff so she's a scientist so I thought that could work but now we're gonna get into the moveset so Maddie Fenton is an inventor of her own devices and gadgets so Maddie is a really is really strong in the show and even through Vlad Plasmius into the ghost zone with her own hands so she's even taking out his ghost pets just as I mentioned from that episode without Danny Phantom's help so she truly has a lot of great fight a great fighter potential so just with only two characters we only got two characters that's in this game so far from Danny Phantom so I'm hoping that maybe they'll probably get more if we get more in the future or maybe if they decide to come out with a different game if they do hopefully they just do a lot more from these reps because he has so many different characters and iconic characters that can be able to shine so we're going to get into our moves is so many different inventions it's a lot of different gadgets and techs or different tech that they use in the show that Danny Phantom uses is he's not even using all the, the tech that she invented from the show from his move kit so Danny Phantom can definitely have even way more moves than he has in his moves his move pool already so the one thing I want to do differently let me see let me see can I go to training I'm gonna do something different for this just something a little different oh it's the dojo I just want to use Danny Phantom as an example no, no, no. No, 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 no. let's use let's showcase should I go to country we're gonna get into her moveset now should I go to I like the song here it just says that the country doesn't have any new music it plays the same song Let's put, let's put our two Danny uh, Phantom characters in. So we're just going to try to use, it's just because of what he has and it makes the most sense. So let's try to load in, load up. We're not going to just be having our attackers. I like that. What? They echo. Their voices echo. So we're just going to do a little bit of just some kind of just something to play around with. So y'all just not looking at the screen. I want to just try some of his moves too. But and I like this song. I think this has the best song. One of the best songs. But um, for Maddie Fenton, just for her abilities and things like that. She has so much stuff in her just that she's made. And with Danny Phantom with some of the stuff like his fencing thermos. He has all this. I wanna put the sound on, can I? That's probably too late. But it, oh well. Oh that's the Musa. So we got all this kind of stuff and just I wanted to bring out the moveset anyway. It seems like the fence and thermos is, is one of the adventures that she invented. When you take a look at Danny Fano, he has these. This is projectiles from his own natural ghost powers. But take a look. Just look at the names and the moves. How many of y'all can spot something that that's, a, that's an invention? It's only one. It's only one move that's in his kit that's an invention that she created the fencing thermos from fencing words it's a fencing worst gadget it's a fencing it's fencing worst tech it's only in it's the only thing that's in his moveset so nothing else that was created and invented from the show from maddie from fencing works as a co-owner is in his kit he didn't he didn't get those moves so he has only the fence and thermos itself 
So we're going to get into this and we're going to, it's just so many that they have. She could just have a giant move pool. So let's start with the first move. So the first, the first move I went with was the Maddie Weasel, with that she called it for, for her little nickname. The Fenton Weasel, which is known as the Maddie we Weasel, I got it from the Million Dollar Ghost episode. So it's a vacuum device designed to collect ambient ghost energy and they shoot it into the ghost zone. So that's what it really does. But from watching and researching, it's like a vacuum, but they modified it to, um, it was a, like a vacuum to capture the ghost. But it functions similar to the fencing thermos that I just showed y'all right on the screen. It's just the same thing. So she can have, instead of like the fencing thermos, she can use the Maddie Weasel that's gonna work similar to the fencing thermos that could be in her moves. So this is just the first move that I came up with. So I thought this could work just like how Danny Phantom uses the fencing thermos in this. See ya. It's not like it's, it's like more than one Danny Phantom. It almost scared me a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was glitching but I thought maybe this could work just like similar to Danny Phantom's Fencing Thermos that's already in this so just a little bit of some other additional things I wanted to do with it this could suck up the enemies she could suck up enemies and release them but it's gonna be different from Rocco Succomatic because Rocco can use his Succomatic to you know, taking an enemy and it spits them back out. It can work something similar to it, but she can just, she's going to be neutral with the Maddie Weasel, which is basically the fencing weasel. So she'll be able to take you in and just capture you from a distance and just be able to launch you either to the left or to the right side. Because you see how the fencing there just pushes you back. It's going to have a different variation. So see, he could just take Ember right in. Psst like that but it just knocks you back that's all it is this is a neutral strong move so let's move on to the next one the defense and grappler so the fence and grappler is a special net gun that ensnares the ghost so so Matt he said huh <laughs> so Maddie's gonna be able to ensnare her opponents from a distance that will trap her enemies for a long for a, for a limited amount of time so the fencing grappler is almost going to be something a little bit different from the Maddie Weasel. So she'll be able to fire the grappler, the special net gun to trap you. And, and then if you're the opponent, you can try to attempt to break out and free yourself by pressing any other any button repeatedly. So I just wanted to show this a little bit. I might just go back to the, uh, the lobby because I don't want to talk when he's standing still. He's like, huh? I don't want to just keep hearing that. So we'll just go back to the brawler, uh, the brawler select. I just wanted to showcase that a little bit, but um, the fencing grappler is just going to be this net gun that really be able to capture you. And the reason why I wanted to also go back because the character I was thinking about with this actual move or this new tech, this another invention that they have and that she uh, made with the fencing grappler is when Plankton tries to grab you with that net. I forgot what what was that? Anybody remember that SpongeBob Patrick captured everybody in, in Bikini Bottom and they were they were shooting people with the, the nets and capturing them and putting them on the rocket. On Sandy's rocket. And they even uh, capture Sandy in it. So the net when Plankton tries to grab you, it's gonna work something similar to it, but it's gonna have bigger distance, a greater distance in which she can be able to fire. So it's gonna be much bigger than Plankton's his his net that he shoots at you when he tries to grab you and pull you in. He can punch you and wail on you and just throw you down or just launch you into the sky. It's gonna be something like that. So I got that from Plankton's grab his little grabbing move or his grabbing technique animation. The next move, I definitely think this will definitely belong in her move kit. The Fenton Anti Creep Stick, which is basically a regular baseball bat with the name Fenton printed on it. It's the perfect move. I think this is one of my favorite moves. And she said, 
I, she said she knows it's a, she said it's just a regular baseball bat but it has the word it has the name Fenton on it that's what makes it even more special and more powerful so the Fenton anti creep stick is going to definitely be in her moves and I would want that the most out of anything else that she has with all her gadgets and tech things like that for Fenton works this can be used for for a series of basic combo attacks for Maddie and this is from the Johnny 13 episode or 13 when he meets uh, Johnny 13 and Shadow for the first time so the fence and anti creep stick would most likely be in her moveset and I, I wanted to put it in for my own ideas so she'll be able to tag you up with the fence and stick or the anti creep stick, creep stick with the baseball bat it's definitely going to be deadly so her next her next move that I went with was the Fenton Pazooka. And notice how the items in this game, they have like the snow bazooka when they shoot snowballs. It's going to be different from that. It's not going to be an item, of course. The Fenton Pazooka is going to be a chargeable move and Maddie can charge it up and shoot beams of energy at her opponents. So once you charge it up, you'll be able to fire a bigger blast with more damage. And notice how I mentioned, remember I brought up the goggles? She's going to be able to um, use her laser goggles as a projectile attack. Maddie can fire laser beams from her goggles for long distance attacks at her targets. And you can really be able to see this when you watch, watch her fight off these ghosts. All she has to do is just switch it on from her glasses using her hands from her own. Uh, using her hands on her goggles and she can switch on and start firing these uh, projectile attacks. I didn't even know she had this. So this was something new that I learned from her techniques and just from her abilities. She just has so much potential. They're not just ordinary goggles. They can they can basically kill you. So it's crazy to see that. So those goggles are definitely in. See how pre prepared she is? So those laser goggles are definitely, it's, it's another one of my favorite techniques that I only wanted to add for a moveset. So those are the goggles or the laser goggles that that's going to be our projectile. The double beam sword that I brought up earlier when she took out those goals, I wanted to put this in her moveset as another additional move for as our final offensive move. So this double bladed beam sword can be wielded during the battle to attack her enemies and it can be retracted at any time. It's a little bit of different gameplay and a character I was thinking about how they implemented was the second DLC character he should have been base roster was Zuko because he can pull his swords out. He can use his swords. See how he brandishes the blade and uses his sword, swords and he can also throw his sword as an item will throw the swords as an item and then he can pick it right back up as well as the enemy but I wanted to do something a little bit different with Maddie's uh, double beam store sword which is that bow style that she uses to destroy everybody well she used this to fight off last mutated ghost animals in that maternal instinct episode just as a reference something else with this that I wanted to do with this beam sword that she uses Maddie is also going to be able to throw her her sword across the battlefield and then eventually return back to Maddie. So it's not going to be able to be thrown like Zuko's where it becomes an item for the opponent to pick up. It's going to already start making its way back to Maddie. So if she misses the first throw, you definitely want to make sure um, it doesn't come right back at you and, and hit you because um, I was thinking of how they implemented Zuko with his swords, being able to brandish, bring out the swords of his own Musa, and then Gerald with his frisbee. Once, once Gerald throws his frisbee with um, on the left, the left directional pad is the frisbee, you know, and then up on the D pad is the basketball, and then down is that clock bomb, or those those bomb clocks that are explosive, and then. The right side is the uh, the paddle or the ping pong paddle that he uses. So I was thinking about his frisbee that comes right back because when he misses, it'll it'll eventually come right back to Gerald. So I wanted to make it make sense in something additional for her beam sword. 
outside of just being able to wield it and attack you with it like Zuko can with his swords she'll be able to throw it so you're trying to run away she'll throw it at you and then it'll, be, it'll eventually start coming right back a little bit of some Darth Maul vibes for Star Wars something like that too you could say that so her recovery move I call it this emergency ops so this was originally a blimp the emergency ops um, blimp for a recovery I didn't know how I wanted her to be able to recover in this game and I'm gonna bring up Jimmy Neutron who I wanted to reference with his hover car so the emergency ops was the emergency ops is origin was originally a blimp but it can transform into a jet that Maddie can be able to fly quickly back onto the stage so I wanted to use Jimmy Neutron as an example because when he uses his recovery he uses the hover cart to be able to manually control I would say Jenny in the mix with the manual control but I was thinking about how they um they created and developed Jimmy Neutron's uh, hover cart his hover cart allows him to be able to get back onto the stage and you can manually control it so I thought maybe something like that with a little bit of a jet that she could be able to fly and be able to um get back on the stage for a little amount of time similar to how it it how the hover cart or the hover car operates in this game for uh, Jimmy Neutron's recovery it's amazing it's definitely one of the best ones so it could be just as good as his so the last move that I wanted to go with I definitely wanted to give her a super and an ultimate attack just like I've been doing ever since this game came out and they introduced their ultimates or final smashes. They're supers. They're ultimate attacks to me. Because it's not some smash rules. <laughs> so the super or the ultimate attack, I call it this. I went with the Fenton Family Ghost Assault Vehicle to for her ultimate because I didn't want to just have her just like just uh, just just go crazy with all types of different gadgets where she'll just be able to fire everything at will and just go crazy with everything that she invented from Fencing Works. A character that I wanted to reference that I was thinking about is Donatello with the turtle van. Turtle shell drift. He was like, watch the paint. <laughs> so I was thinking of Donatello for this as her ultimate attack. The Fencing Family Ghost Assault vehicle where the player can control the RV. And in this RV, the fence, this is what it's actually called in the show. It's the Fencing Family Ghost Assault vehicle Maybe they can add Jack Fenton and Jazz into the vehicle and Danny Fanner can be in there as well. Almost something similar to how they have Leonardo and Mikey and another Raphael inside the van. <laughs> they can probably add Jack Fenton into this to have him uh, control it and make an appearance in her super. The Fenton family ghost assault vehicle where the player could control the vehicle or the RV and this RV is how they travel and they ghost hunt. They use the same vehicle to hunt ghosts and travel and it's heavily equipped with anti ghost weaponry and I think this will be a nice super for her to be able to use on the battlefield and just to have manual control. None of these characters have once you use the super I said this before with many other characters I've done so far for this for this series none of these characters have where none of these characters give you manual control when you activate their supers or their ultimates they could definitely start doing something different like that maybe in the next game or other characters that probably can get in in the near future you could be able to manually control the, the the rv and the vehicles or control the characters that's going to be powered up so I thought this could work similar to if you cannot control it manually, it can work similarly. It could be similar to how Donatello goes crazy and gets inside the turtle van and starts shooting at the enemy. So I think this seems fitting for her ultimate because she's always ready to hunt down ghosts and wear protective gear. She's always on the hunt and she's always looking out for Danny Fano to make sure he's safe. And she has even protected him and has been there. And I already mentioned how she was able to handle herself against all those different ghosts. She has, she's able to 
really be a force to be reckoned with by herself as a solo character. So if she was able to fight off Vlad's mutated ghost animals and his pets and things like that and all those ghosts, she's put a fight, you know, she's put up, um, she's put away by herself without Danny Phantom getting involved in the fight and Danny Phantom just watching and looking on. She definitely would be a great character to get into this game. That'll be a little bit different and it'll probably make you think of how they picked Hugh Neutron and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl from the first game. Because Jimmy's dad got sent, got into the game, and then I seen some people bring up maybe since they got Jimmy's dad into the game for Hugh Neutron, since Hugh Neutron got into the game successfully from the campaign, maybe they will add Jack Fenton or something like that. Maybe that might end up being a possibility. But being open and honest, I would rather have Maddie Fenton over Jack Fenton any day because of what she can do and what she's capable of. Not, I'm not taking anything away from Jack Fenton, but Maddie is so much stronger in this game. It, this is a game for Maddie Fenton. It definitely is. It really is. This is a game just for her to get in and shine on. Just imagine the interactions that Danny Phantom would say. He would be shocked to see his own, his own family member in, in the game. Just like how Jimmy Neutron has unique interactions with Hugh Neutron in the story Hugh Neutron isn't playable in this game but he's in the story and Jimmy Neutron has unique interact interactions with him because he's in his lab and he never really goes in there it's his secret lab so it's just imagine Danny Phantom reacting to his to Maddie and then Ember you know so I don't even think Ember even met Maddie Fenton but they they had all these different characters combinations from all these different shows and even these bosses that from characters that didn't even meet each other yet or have never really met each other from the same world or from the same show they say different things to each other even if they really didn't really encounter each other in the show which is cool so it just opens the door for all these different characters to get into this game they have a lot of options like Maddie and more, Danny Phantom has a lot of good shows and great characters that can be memorable and actually create sales and keep players interested in investing into the game and interested in playing the game. We don't need these kind of characters coming up in here where there's not going to be much interest and the player's not going to be willing to spend the money to buy some of these characters. Maddie Fenton will create sales and Danny Fano has a lot of different characters that can get into the game. He doesn't have that many reps. It's just two Danny Fano characters that's in this game with one stage, which is crazy. It's only one Danny Fano stage. It's two character reps. It's just so much more that this roster can have and build. It's a lot that they can end up doing. It's so much more that they can do. I'm just going to bring this up. I meant to do this from the other video. Let's play this game. It's only one guy, Edgar, and it's four players. It's five people. It's four players in there. But something else that some people didn't really look at, look at this space. Look at the amount of space that they can do. Let's change the characters since we all talking things, all things Danny Phantom. Look at the space. I meant to bring this up in the other video. Look at the space. So you're saying there's nobody, go who's going to go under Reptar? Maybe it is more. But I, I brought this up from the, I brought this up from the first game beforehand. I'm just getting ready to close this out. There's got to be more. There has to be more. It's, let's see. It's six characters every row. It's six characters per row. And then we only got four characters in this column. Rocco, Cora, Ember, and Reptar are the only four characters in this column. So who's who's gonna go under Reptar? Please don't say. <clears throat> please don't tell me it's Bebop. Please don't tell me it's Fire Lord Ozai. Just please don't tell me it's a it's another SpongeBob character. <clears throat> we just don't need those kind of reps. We gotta get other characters. It wouldn't be bad to see another Danny Fano character. Then you got two character two reps. 
but you see all that space look at the just look at the space this game can be bigger and better than what we have right now she's just one of the many characters that can get in. it's not just about danny phantom it's a lot of other characters that can get into this game to really be able to expand this product so we can get this off the ground but it's almost looking like it's too late because we don't have enough people that's getting into this game we don't have enough information and it's just dragged on longer than i expected it's just a lot to talk about when it comes to these characters because it's so much potential for not only Maddie Fenton, but it's just so many other characters that's missing. Mexis and Reshard by herself, Jenny by herself, Zim is solo. We only got one Wild Thornberry's character. We got two turtles. It's just, it's just ridiculous. We gotta get more stuff for this game. It needs to get more. It's just this this whole guy. I'm leaving it on the screen for the rest of the premiere. Just look at the space. We got five characters in this role. Who's next? But plans probably got changed because this team isn't the same. I'll be shocked if we're getting more reps. But I want to see more for this game so it can grow. It needs to grow. It needs sales. It needs players. But when you got people just like it's just playing this game. I haven't even seen these guys before. I think I've seen Sam Rock. We got people in here playing this game. These are the only ones playing. There's nobody else on. Five stops, 19 minutes. There's no one else on, really. It's a Saturday night. As y'all see this, y'all see this the next day or so. It's a Saturday night. This is the weekend, and this is what it looks like. So we got to get more stuff for this game. Let me know what you guys think about Maddie Fenton. The moose that's going to be there and the time stamps. I didn't think this would be that long. But it's just so much capability and potential that they can end up doing for this game. It's just so much more. Maybe we'll get something this week with the final four a couple days of October. Maybe we, we might. Because next week, the next Thursday, it's, it's going to be in this anniversary. we got to get something.